to all of you, I wanted to say thank you very much. A few videos ago, I unveiled my brand new Gamer Sups Shaker Cup, and you guys crushed it. And I mean, not just like any kind of crush, like into a fine red mist crushed it. It was a pre-order then, which means it should be arriving into your hands relatively soon, and you'll probably be wondering, what should I fill that shaker cup with? Well, there are an incredibly large amount of flavors with a huge variety, a lot of them getting better and better with releases. So I've decided to put together a tier list on the top gamer sups flavors, and it has made me say some very dumb things. Let's have a Good discussion about Jay Schlatt's titty milk. Just a long one. There is a link in the description to a video I made on my second channel that will give you a tier list of all the gamer subs flavors currently available and which ones I think you should snag. If you use my code Bricky, you will save 10% off your order, provide me with a decent chunk of change, and you can get yourself stocked up and prepared as soon as possible. Check out the tier list in the description. Thank you, gamer subs, for sponsoring this video. Check out the other link in the description that allows you to go to my gamer subs landing page use code bricky and let's talk about call of duty <clears throat> Ow. hello everybody my name is bricky currently hiding in the back of the map because i can't trust these spawns modern warfare 2 2 2022 the second. This is a video game. As many of you are aware, COD still it has its grips on me. In a market where classic deathmatch style games are uncommon or outright failing to provide good content, cough, cough, I am looking for just, just, just one more hit each year. I did a review on Modern Warfare 2019 many years back and my overall opinions on it were relative joy. A decent campaign with an impressively realistic yet still arcade like multiplayer made it seem like we were in a, a true resurgence for this franchise. But of course to have good you need to have a little bit of bad and those hopes were dashed with Call of Duty Cold War and Vanguard. The zombies mode of Cold War being the only thing I really spent any time on. But I was holding out. Holding out for a hero, one might say. Infinity Ward, like, you've gotta be strong, you've gotta be fast, and you've gotta be fresh full of ideas. It's rare that a sequel from a surprise success ends up doing well. Normally, they just pack on more and more things, try to make it bigger and bigger, try to capitalize on everything they can with their extra budget and newly garnered hype. Sometimes they pull it off. And sometimes the end product is bigger, louder, stranger, and dumber. Modern Warfare's campaign was not an overly complicated beast as was its intention. It was an attempt to reboot the genre with a grittier and more realistic type of story. Gone are the days of combat, mechs, and mental reprogramming. We're talking politics, rules of engagement, international tensions, the whole shebang. Complete with your stereotypical Russian general villain, which... You jumped the gun on that one a year too early. For the most part, Modern Warfare's campaign strength didn't rely in its story or its characters. Price was fun to see, sure, but it's not the same price. Its strengths were its grittier and darker setting and tone, its visuals, its combat arenas, its overall tension. It's not a surprise that Clean House, a mission early on where you need to clear a civilian at home, just room by room, was the standout mission. As it forced you to make quick decisions about threat identification in a complicated scenario. It felt tense, it felt gritty, it was kind of the great way to describe Modern Warfare 2019 in a nutshell. Modern Warfare 2, Two, the second, 2022, takes what it did well in the first game and stretches the concept like you trying to fit a wallpaper to the wrong aspect ratio. The game begins with you playing as Ghost, our not main character, despite what every single piece of marketing might make you believe. Slowly moving through a canyon to identify an Iranian general, the goal of which is to assassinate, quietly. <laughs> like a ghost. You know it's gonna be a Call of Duty game when you are 10 minutes 
into the game, and you've already reintegrated an Iranian general with the afterlife. This sparks a series of events by local Twitch streamer Hassan. Feminism doesn't matter. Feminists are the problem. Feminists! Which 90% of the time involves Twitch's number one export, you know, terrorism. And the main goal of the story is to stop Hassan's terrorism. Now, I don't necessarily hate this campaign, but I'm definitely going to sound like I do. I want to make this clear. I do not hate this campaign. It is serviceable. It has its moments. I'd say it's a bit above average and all that. And as far as COD campaigns go, it just isn't that bad. It's all right. I do not hate this campaign. But I fucking hate everything this game stands for. Do you not feel pandered to? Do you not feel like you're being talked down to by body bratwurst fingers Kotick? This game has absolutely nothing to do with the previous tile from 2009. It is an entire game sold off the back of characters from over a decade ago who do absolutely nothing to earn a name. I understand it's a reboot. I get it. But, but. But how are you invoking nostalgia on characters when they're not the same fucking characters? These are not the same characters. And yet I'm expected to feel some extreme fucking glee when I hear their names aloud. Sergeant, you so much damage. Let's get ourselves a win, yeah, LT. Oh! This isn't the same soap! This isn't the same ghost! I get, I get it's a reboot. I know, I get it. But you treat it like I'm supposed to be in constant orgasm because you made the do with the skull mask your cover art. Hi, hello, it's me, elderly Bricky, you know, with my can and all that. Guess what? I played 2009 MW2 when it came out. You know what ghosts did in that game? Fucking nothing. <laughs> He was just a cool guy. He was a mask. He wasn't a character. He was a mask, a man in the mask. The mask and his call sign ghost were the only cool things about him. And they made an entire game and marketing campaign around him. Do you not feel pandered to? Do you not feel pandered to? And you know what makes me matter? Ghost is great in this game. He's an actual fucking character with actual fucking dialogue, with actual personality. And he blows 2009 Ghost out of the water 10 times over because he actually has character development. I hate everything this game stands for, even though it is not a bad game, but good God. <sighs> So you try to find Hassan, and he's not there. Idiot. And instead, you find out he has an American ballistic missile, a lot like the one you pasted his general with. You go do stuff in Amsterdam to get a location, and then you go to Mexico as you find out he has dealings with the Las Almas cartel. This is where we meet certified badass and genuinely great character Alejandro Vargas. Colonel Alejandro is leading forces against the cartel, and this is where we get our first real clean house segment. You pursue Hassan through a ton of border town houses, and the detail here is really well done. It feels lived in and simultaneously dangerous, like the gang houses and that one really good True Detective episode or the streets in Sicario. In fact, you'll be, you'll be seeing a lot of Sicario in this game. Moving from house to house, you have to de-escalate civilian violence or in some cases, re-escalate it. What is this? Got an M203 grenade launcher on it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking bean someone. <laughs> Breaching. Breaching. Nice try. Good thing I brought rubber bullet. Oh no. You also get a very interesting moment with some local police. These are her guys. <laughs> Hard to tell you boys apart from the cartel. You fail to apprehend Hassan, unfortunately, and the Mexican Special Forces and Task Force 141 team up to try to find him, and I have to give the game credit. These photorealistic cutscenes are incredible when they happen. Lieutenant, last one says they call you Ghost. Actually, I believe he prefers to How to? Welcome to the City of Souls. These moments with characters talking and the facial animations present a, just a great job in giving them way more life. Where the 2019 installment of Modern Warfare didn't put much emphasis on his characters, this one is doing a much better job. See, you're now in the meat of the game, which almost always involves finding Hassan. Story-wise, that's fine for now, but the meat also involves its gameplay. Now, I played this game on normal mode because I didn't really want to challenge myself too much, yet I found myself taking damage or dying at an astounding rate on normal. Putting yourself out in the open is a quick way to get red jello screen real fast, which further adds the attempts at a more grounded and realistic campaign. Where it starts to falter is when you realize they don't really have a whole lot of tricks at their disposal. In order 
order to make the game more difficult, they really just have two options. Sending more men at you, or sending more... Oh, I hit my mic. Sending more armored men at you. Armored enemies are often just guys with helmets or these, these massive full body armor suits that can take upwards of an entire magazine to kill with body shots. This wouldn't be as much of a problem if it wasn't the only thing they did to up the difficulty, but it is. You might dislike all the future games like Black Ops 3 or Infinite Warfare, but they had one thing going for them and that was enemy variety. There was a ton of various types of enemies that could help adjust the difficulty in a myriad of ways. They basically have guy and guy with a shitload of armor. And so even on normal mode, when you're spending half a mag to kill someone, it's not enjoyable, it's tedious. The developers may have realized this, which is why they try to break up the gameplay loop with different missions such as as the AC-131 you play right after this segment. Philip Graves is the commander of a private military corporation called Shadow Company, which you may remember from the prior game in 2009. The AC-130 segment is fine. People cream their jorts for gunship sections, and while my jorts aren't entirely spotless, it goes on for longer than I'd like, despite the incredible sound effects. <laughs> If this game's got one thing going for it, it's the sound. You capture Hassan, but he pulls out that Uno reverse card and is like, lol, Lamau, if you kill me, international tensions will be high and blah, 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 politics, government, rules of engagement. I'd Gaddafi the guy if I could, full stop, sponsored by Cutco. But no, you have to send him back right now until you find the other missiles. Where Modern Warfare 2 so far has been a bit light on the characters and proper missions, Recon by Fire decides to remind all of us that there is still talented people working at Infinity Ward. Though, it's more than just Infinity Ward now. Look at the amount of co-companies are on the start of this game. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, 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 ah. Recon by Fire has you playing as Gaz, working with Price and Laswell on a boat to stealthfully take out section by section of enemies using a variety of methods. It's a very long mission, but combines good sniper gameplay with some genuine tactics on an extremely large map. The scale of this area is really at play here, and it almost feels like you're liberating an outpost in a Far Cry game, which I'd say is good. What sticks out more than anything, though, are the, the little bits of dialogue. Try to anticipate their path. If you have to maneuver, do it slow and steady. If you have to maneuver, do it slow and steady. No quick movements. No quick movements. Not that part, though. You can get away with one sentence, but don't repeat the entire fucking thing. Stop fingering my nostalgia prostate. Five. This you can do math, sir. You're getting cheeky, are you? Uh, it's taking the piss, Captain. Good to laugh while we still can. Now that's good stuff. It's well needed character development, and I think if you had it in the game, a bit more people would be thinking about these characters a lot more. But they don't really give a shit about Gaz and Laswell, so they only really care about Price because he's Price, but he's not the same Price. The actual time was spent on Soap and Ghost, and that's why, despite this being probably the strongest mission in the game, Recon by Fire, it is not given the same attention as our bromance duo. Laswell actually gets captured here, and you rush off to save her along with a little cameo from far in the prior game. Naturally, though, in order to experience good, you must experience some bad. Because this mission is absolutely terrible. It's an attempt at the Uncharted style convoy hopping mission, but it just plays so incredibly dull. Despite the fact that they will attempt to do some old school COD events in the beginning with Gaz falling out of his helicopter and then firing his pistol hanging upside down. That part's cool. Yeah, it's great. Goes well with Freebird. But this part afterwards is so Dull. You drive a convoy in a line to dodge a gun and a hilariously spaced triple mine launcher it has with it. I'm looking at this and just how slow this action chase scene is. And it just reminds me of how much better things were done in the prior game. I'm surprised there's no music. There's no action music right now. What? what? That's weird. What becomes increasingly apparent as I move through this game is that Call of Duty wants to have its cake and eat ass too. Or wants to eat its it wants to do both things at once. The entire next segment involves infiltrating the cartel warlord's fancy house, including an interrogation about aspects of the story you may or may not have listened to. And around here is when I realized that 
This game is just kind of dumb. It wants to become a more gritty grounded story with gameplay to match, but that's completely at odds with what Call of Duty has become. Walking through Amsterdam to stun some guy and kidnap a few others is not exciting even if it attempts the grit. But the story, being about a young Twitch streamer mad at the Tomahawk missile his general ate to then steal American ballistic missiles and utilize the help of a Mexican cartel to move them, like what the fuck? But then people will say, oh, it's a Call of Duty game. Game. It's not meant to be taken seriously, but then immediately turn when I say the gameplay is dull and say, well, it's supposed to be a grittier COD game. It's Schrodinger's realism. It's COD, so it's okay when it's stupid, but it's trying to be realistic, so it's okay when it's dull. The 2009 Modern Warfare 2 was really when the game jumped the shark. I replayed the remastered version in preparation for this video to see, you know, where the similarities lie. The differences are entirely in its presentation and how much the overarching plot takes over the game. But mainly, it's all presentation. Instead of normal cutscenes, it's all pre-mission briefings. So the emphasis can be more on the presentation and game than trying to create this overarching complex narrative. Modern Warfare 2 2009 story is ludicrous. After the death of Zakayev in COD 4, there is a power vacuum that is fed by the ultra-nationalists who gain a whole lot of power, creating horrible tensions between Russia and the US. Makarov leads an ultra-nationalist Russian group who slaughters an airport in a mass shooting because they know that they have a secret CIA spy in their midst, so they kill him at the end in a false flag operation, so Russia, already at bad tensions with America, think that America did this and then invade America. That's the story. But really, that's all backdrop. This all happens within the first five or so missions, and the entire rest of the game is the aftermath. This is more to get you to these awesome locales and intrigue. This is to get a crazy segment where Russia invades America, and you can have the White House on fire. If I wanted to show the difference between these two games, all I need to do is put them side by side. There are two separate vehicle-centric chase scenes. In the original, you are running away. In the newest one, you are the pursuer. I have made sure these audio levels are the exact same. I have not increased the volume of any music, sound effects, or anything for both. These are stock standard. Look at the difference. The gameplay can be shooting the same guy over and over again in the original because how it's presented is so much more interesting, so much more exciting. Moments like gas falling out of the helicopter are proliferated all throughout the prior game. There's practically one per mission. Tone is set with the beginning of the mission more than anything else. The scene of soap and roach in the snowy mountains as the jet passes overhead just feels so much different than what we have now. It feels like a war action movie and it plays it up. In the attempt to ground the game, you got your boots stuck in the name Call of Duty. And so you're forced to try to still be that silly over the top COD game while claiming that you're not. And then I'll hear something like, oh, they're trying to go back to the more realistic days of COD 4. COD 4? In COD 4, you get nuked. Atom bomb, baby, little atom bomb. It's just the way I wanted to be. A million times higher than TNT. Are you shitting me? You get nuked in COD 4. This tangent is all prefacing something important. You can be dumb and serious at the same time, but it's how you interweave all those aspects. The greatest sin this game commits is massively overcomplicating something that doesn't need to be complicated. The entire mission of Soap going undercover to get a meeting with a Mexican cartel lord to then be questioned on if you're paying attention to the game to then do a little hitman ask do it yourself infiltration mission only to find out oh my god the bad bitch who did the interrogation is actually the cartel leader what didn't see that coming bullshit because they are working with twitch streamer hassan that has been established by republicans to move american owned missiles they have to get revenge for the death for his general prior remember when keith david said <laughs> Take your team and secure the burger town. And we were all like, 
Yeah, I love this game. I'm being a bit harsh on the overall plot, but like I said before, the thing that Modern Warfare 2-2 2022 does better is that it at least has the character moments. I may harp on the use of traditional cutscenes and military jargon, but if I'm being completely fair, it does allow them to be fleshed out a bit more. Alejandro Vargas is a character I really enjoy. He was constantly referred to as Giga Chad Alejandro when I streamed because he's a strong character with a strong sense of duty. His home, Mexico, is ravaged by cartels, and he wants nothing more than to clean that shit up. There's a cutscene where your character gets your head beaten, and the room is set on fire, and it holds for so long that you're certain this is your character's death, and then Giga Chet Alejandro flies in at the last second to get you out alive. He's got a temper, but his temper is justified because he's pissed about what's happening to his home. Plus, a Mexican drug cartel is a pretty easy enemy to go for in terms of politics. Nobody fucking likes the cartel, and he's constantly giving a great performance expressing it. Las Almas needs me. Las Almas needs soldiers, non sicarios. You stay. You disgrace the army. So you go do an oil derrick mission, like in the prior game, to disable another one of Hassan's missiles. Overall, it's a fine mission, has a cool thing where the containers on the ship kind of move around and the cover changes. I like that a lot. It's one of those great ways to how to make the gameplay interesting when it's only shoot guys that I mentioned earlier. However, we're now about two thirds into the game. And so far, this game, while not being anything like the original in terms of story, is following very similar beats. There's a beat here most people are probably waiting for. And well, let's hear. This is the immediate future. Step away from the gate. This is my base. Not a base. This is a sizable covert facility. And I admire it. So I'm taking it. You boys have been relieved. Thank you for your service. No, no, no. no. I don't take orders from you. Didn't Valeria say that? Now that makes me wonder what else I don't know about your affiliation with the drug lord. What the fuck did you just say to me, Ben the Elder? You're lying griefs. Don't do that. Don't do that. No one needs to get hurt here. Are you threatening us? Soldier, I don't make threats. I make guarantees. So let's not do this. I'm calling Shepard. General Shepard sends his regards. He told me all wouldn't take this well. So you've got your classic General Shepard betrayal here. It even hits you with the swap from blue to red nameplate, which I can't tell if I like. I don't know if the red nameplate swap is, hey, dummy, dumb, dumb head with the big, dumb, dumb head. If you didn't realize he's the bad guy now, or if it's a clever way to solidify the change. I don't know. I don't know which I'm in two minds about it. Now this betrayal, much like the original, comes out of nowhere to be explained later. It also, much like the original, contains one of the strongest missions directly after Enemy of My Enemy in 2009 and Alone in 2022. Alone is the mission I think makes this game. It's about tied with Recon by Fire, a bit worse from the gameplay side, but a million times better from the story and character side. If you've been taking what I've been saying so far as my overall opinion of the game, you probably think I despise this game. But in reality, this mission and a few after it kind of elevate the entire product at least a point or two. Soap is wounded and alone in the streets of Las Almas. And this entire place is covered in Shadow Company. And instead of making this section entirely reliant on stealth, they actually use it as a way to test like a little rudimentary crafting system. You move from place to place, crafting various tools to be able to distract, disorient, or outright kill the enemies. This gives us that presentation that I was so heavily waiting for. The slaughter in the streets as Shadow Company go through is very nasty, but it gives room for very detailed environments and exploration. But the most important part is we get our little bromance between Soap and Ghost. Much like in Recon by Fire, there is a great back and forth between our characters that really makes you start to give a shit about these two. For most of the game, Ghost was just this tall, imposing guy in a mask, much like he was in the prior title. But now, we have the ability to give both him and Soap some well-needed character development. Be careful who you trust, Sergeant. People you know can hurt you the most. Good advice, LT. I want to be like you when I grow up. You want to be better than me, Johnny? Got my work cut out then. That you do. Think I'll live that long? Probably not. I'm trying to keep you alive and get you here in one piece. One of us needs to survive to tell the tale. <laughs> Taking a shine to me then. Not in the slightest. Congratulations, you're a winner. How <laughs> I'd be all your head. English McTavish. Sorry, sir. Let me translate. Go fuck yourself.
much better. It's great. Ghost is so insanely edgy, just an edgelord of immense proportions sometimes, but being an edgelord is at least still a character. And I like Graves too. He was a funny guy before the betrayal and it was overall a joy to have around, but it's also all, all the subtle things like his absolutely horrendous Spanish and overall holier than thou attitude he walks around with. It's in nombre who killed you for this. Oh, no, no. El Nombre is no bueno right now, amigo. You cut your fucking head off. Shut the fuck up. No. Mas. Habla. This is going to look muy familiar to usted, amigo. Tortured. No! No! Te arrancaré los huevos! Get him out of here. Take him to the spot, we'll arrest him. Right away, Commander. All right, these narcos are warlords, and the people here will do anything to help them. So no pussying around, okay? If they're harboring Hassan, I want him flushed out! <clears throat> and uh, keep your head on a swivel for these Brits. Take them dead or alive. <sighs> you know my preference. Yep, yep, yep. Also, if you're thinking to yourself, God, why does he sound so familiar? Well, you know, it's the same guy who plays Rafe in Uncharted 4. He's really good at playing condescending dickheads, it would seem. It's also just good development of Shadow Company. The tiny things mean the world. They're all dressed in black and a PMC, so they have a bit more character than normal military. But it's just a tiny little affirmation of, yep, yep is great. Yep, yep, yep. Instead of a yes sir or affirmative, having that casual yep yep gives them a bit more character and makes it feel so much more casual. You know, you don't necessarily feel like Commander Graves, despite him being their superior, is really talking down to them or being stern. He tells them stuff and they're all just kind of yep yep. Yes, sir. Yep, yep. And let's get this done. Yep. Yep, yep. yep. All right. It's not even something that's called attention to. They just do it. The greatest sin of this mission is simply that it's so damn late. All of this great character development of Soap, Ghost, Graves, and even Shadow Company arrives two thirds of the way into the game at the second act low point. It's way too late. And if they gave them the same treatment they gave Alejandro, I think it would be in a much more positive on the campaign as a whole. But as it stands, it's just a bit too far out. Now you're able to escape, then do a mission where you rescue Alejandro at the base he's held at, which involves a light little RTS element where you direct ghosts around to stab people. A bit random, but kind of fun. But it's another one of those things that allows you to break up the classic shoot armored guy gameplay, and I'm all for that. But in order to have some good, you must have some bad. It's time to find out why General Shepard betrayed us. So you have a meeting with Price, and you have a chat with Laswell, which leads to a flashback section when you're playing a shadow company. You get ambushed by Russian PMCs, and you die. You weren't told what you were transporting, but it turns out that they were the very same American missiles you've been trying to take back from Hassan the entire time. Shepard was transporting these missiles very illegally to the little Middle Eastern allies, and Gray's betrayal was an attempt to cover up that knowledge. This might be the stupidest fucking thing in this whole game. You are a PMC uh, transporting illegal ballistic missiles, and the reason the Russians found out who was transporting them and who was sending them was because they heard it on the radio. <coughs> because they heard it on the radio. I want this situation contained. That means this operation will not be required. Right! General, my men are taking fire from the Hello, yes, it's me, General Shepard. Yes, that's right, the American General Shepard. Have you delivered those illegal missiles that I, General Shepard, have sent? The missiles with the name General Shepard, who I, General Shepard, had sent to you? General Shepard's poison, the poison to kill General Shepard, General Shepard's poison. Have you never heard of fucking code names? So the game is called Code Names. I don't know, I don't know. What What don't you know? I don't know, I don't, I don't get You're it. You're transporting illegal missiles that even your soldiers aren't being told about and you're using your real fucking names in the first mission you find that the missiles are american because of the giant american flag on the missile etched in you don't want to maybe take a grinder to that maybe maybe some fucking spray paint yeah why well, just put property of general shepherd on the side of it while you're at it the entire betrayal is to cover up that level of fuck up that is the reason for this whole thing and if this could not get worse they all go together to have a meeting to talk about raiding Graves headquarters off the books and Ghost takes off his mask and instead puts a bunch of masks on the table and says, we're a new team now. 
ghost team. And then ghost team said it's ghosting time and totally ghosted all over those guys. I cringe so fucking hard. I think I turned my body into a miniature black hole. They make up for a little bit of this with a soundtrack, but oh! So you infiltrate the area and you fight wave after wave after wave of armored enemies. I mean, at this point, the gameplay just becomes tedious. It's all armored enemies now. They don't have any other enemy variety. It's just never ending dudes and dudes with armor. And then, of course, you fight graves in a tank. You just run around the map. You throw C4 and RPGs at the tank. Yes, yes, the the grittier COD game here, of course. Though the character development does hit well, though. Graves' terrible Spanish taunting mixed with the history of the game so far. It does add a lot to it. Los amigos will drop Los Bocaros like a bad fucking habit, brother. The tank goes boom, but we don't actually see him die. Now, obviously, if you look at the tank, many of people have informed me that you don't survive when the tank goes like that it'll absolutely kill you but hey when it comes to media no body no kill you could easily say he was remote controlling it or he could come back with a wicked scar next game no idea i wouldn't mind it though i mean i thought he was a great character so i'd like to bring him back and the last mission is in chicago and hassan plans to use it to blow up dc or at least cause a lot of havoc which unfortunately means we have to wave goodbye to giga chad alejandro keep fighting the good fight hermano do that better end my brother good luck amigos he better return the next game. I like him a lot. The final mission involves roping down a building in Chicago, clearing out people and saving hostages. It's not particularly interesting, and it's not particularly exciting. But the actual final part, though, is infuriating to deal with. You are stuck on one floor with no gun, and you need to craft stuff to survive and kill some extremely heavily armored enemies, much like in the earlier section in the Alone mission. I could not be fucked with this part. I was tired of the mission so much, so I just ran around to Mach 5, grabbing what I could to finally shank the enemies. Anyway, there's a little first-person scene. A song gets shot by ghosts and you all go having a drink with the boys and then i have a mental breakdown they're working with someone new dude if it's fucking if it's fucking makarov i'm gonna scream who is he makarov <laughs> next thing you're gonna tell me is that we're gonna cut to a clip of him saying no russia in the beginning of the, of the third game You get a plane hijacking moment at the end of the campaign. The no Russian line that I was not at all surprised they used again was hit and, and we're done. The video's title is Bigger, Louder, Stranger, and Dumber. Absent from my title is worse because this is one of those situations where there is simply more to complain about in total. There are more things wrong with this game than the 2019 entry, but it's not bad. When I come away from the campaign, I'm left with overall satisfaction because all I mainly fixate on are Alejandro, Ghost Soap, Graves, and the good missions like Alone and Recon by Fire. But there's so much dull slog that you have to move through gameplay-wise that doesn't have the variety to be enjoyable, and story plot points that are just so laughably bad that it creates the view that I hate this game despite still somewhat enjoying it. What it lacks first and foremost over the prior title is that presentation and simplicity. It's trying to straddle the line between being a grittier, more grounded game and still being Call of Duty. But the thing is that you can do that. There are bizarre premises that are taken 100% seriously and they work. Wolfenstein The New Order is taken 100% strong and seriously despite how just so out there and bizarre the concept is. But they still make it dark, serious, and emotional while being a weird concept. It doesn't work when the story is overly complicated yet at the same time makes dumb decisions and somehow still finds a way to be dull. Its characters are the saving grace of the entire game, which is why you see memes about Ghost and his damn stare and not memes about the rest of the game. You gotta tone it back. You gotta relax it. The catalyst for most other COD games happened in the first couple of missions, and they were an excuse to get you to do cool things for the rest of the game. The American campaign in the original Modern Warfare 2 was able to pull off a fantastic volume of serious COD moments despite it being a COD game. One of the best missions doesn't even have a debrief. You finish the Gulag mission, big exciting soundtrack explosions, you get pulled out of the thing, and then it cuts to black and you are hit dead center with a public service evacuation announcement set to loop, and it hangs on it 
for a while, fading in to a bunker full of dying and wounded American soldiers. The bunker that you can spend a decent amount of time walking around in, and when you finally leave, has the music swell up with a shot of flaming Washington, D.C. And right then, the title card decides to hit of their own accord. One of my favorite missions in that whole game, just for the tone and setting it provides, the whole time you still just doing Kill Shoot Man. Whereas the last mission of Modern Warfare 2, 2 in 2022, has you play as the cool mask guy and quick scope the main villain in the head. I don't know how time will treat this game. I originally considered covering the multiplayer too, but I got too into talking about the campaign. I didn't want this to be a two hour long video. As for the multiplayer, I enjoy it for the most part. I find the time to kill too fast, and I wish back for the days of Black Ops, the long time to kills would return. Uh, the UI is horrible. It looks like it was made for a mobile game, which considering how big the buttons are, and the sliders, I think it might be, maybe was. The perk system makes you want to hurt myself. The idea of regular perks, mid perks, and high level perks is, it's almost like they're assigned on a rating system. Almost like they can be graded on a scale of one, two, and three, like a point system, you know? Was there any other COD game that maybe did it like that, you know? That was had a really good perk system they could have used here instead? Hmm. But I mean, it's good. I like it more than Cold War, and I like it more than Vanguard. The spawns are terrible, worse than normal CODs. I think there's some issue with the spawn logic, and some of the snipers need to be toned down, the SPR specifically, if they haven't already. But you know, it's another COD multiplayer game, and I'm still a sucker for a classic style deathmatch, and I'm pretty sure I'm already max rank at this point, or the 55. But the campaign is the thing stuck in my head. The bafflingly bad decisions in story writing combined with the bafflingly good decisions in character writing. The great set pieces and good combat audio mixed with the terrible enemy variety and scaling. Missions like Alone and Recon by Fire mixed with missions like the horrible Convoy one. It's what the title says. Bigger, louder, stranger, and dumber. And maybe that's what you get when you have this many credits on game development. When your studio is under the pork sausage thumb of Bobby Kotick and when creative freedom is a dream that died with infinite warfare. I don't hate this game, but I hate things about it. I hate aspects. If I had to rate it out of 10, I'd probably give the campaign six, six and a half, maybe six and a half. Slightly above average for what I expected. Not a six, like it's a D, it's really bad, but a genuinely slightly above average six, six and a half. Out of 10 scales suck anyway, they're hard to specify. But I want to end with something else, something different. Instead of rattling off questions, I'm going to let my Patreon and YouTube member list go over the background sound of radio chatter from the original MW2. This radio chatter plays during the invasion of DC by the Russians, and it's stuff you don't really hear unless you listen out for it. Things that didn't need to be in the game, but were in there anyway. Real presentation, a dedication to what they were going for, and a real solid solidified concept of here's our story, it's a backdrop to have the invasion of DC. Let's make it feel like an invasion of DC. Enjoy, and I'll see you all next time.